Hello y'all, this is Alex again. Uh, today we're going to go over scaling of our drawing because without scale uh, it really is just a picture and what we need is a blueprint that has working features in it to where uh, there's some kind of realism in the drawing to where we can measure things and all that kind of stuff. But basically this is my next, the next drawing that I'm in the process of doing right now. This is a two-day event where day one will go this way and day two will go this way and um, it won't be exactly the same day two. I'm going to modify a few things. But what we're going to do right now is to figure out the scale of this map and uh, this map is set up to uh, fit on a standard piece of paper, printer paper. Uh, so the scaling of this versus other sites is probably going to be different. So I think the first thing you need to do before you can make any of these circles or all this stuff, I had to measure and figure out, okay, what is a unit in here? I'm not sure what you'd even call it, not a pixel, but whatever the measuring unit is, how, how many of them are equal to 10 feet and that type of thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use this tool here, which is, oh, hold on a sec. Is a parallel dimensioning tool so that will allow me to measure the distance of, and what I'm going to measure is this 500 feet right here yeah. all right so this thing will snap to that node oh, actually I'm going to do it this way first that node to this node So now we know that 500 feet is equal to 6.94 inches. So I've done a little spreadsheet. I've kind of gotten this read before in advance, but here's our 500 feet. Here's our length on our actual drawing. And this is what it, the, the units per foot, uh, drawing units, whatever Corel calls that. I'm not sure what the terminology is. So every foot is equal to that much on our map. So 10 feet, I basically just made a, a deal here where uh, I'm multiplying 10 feet by this to get how big that is. Okay, and then all these are all multiplying by that same number. So this is number of feet and then what that is on our drawing. <clears throat> if we look at diameters for the circles, the flow, the, uh, flow analysis circles, it's really the diameter we're going to actually see when we go to measure it. So I've doubled these here. So 100 feet is 276, or I mean 2.776. So um, let's see. So if I go over here and click this circle, 100 foot, Right here it tells me it's 2.778, so that's really close. I'm not really worried it's off just a tad like that. But that, that basically is how I went and made all these circles originally and then put this text in here to kind of give what those were. So that's that scale to the drawing based on this being correct, which I believe it is. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so next thing I needed to do and Roger was pretty adamant about making sure that our race line is the right width because it'll make sense on how we weave through the cones of the car how wide the car is because there is no such thing as a a, a thin car or whatever anyway uh, let's see hold on a sec so what I've done is uh, I need to go back to the drawing I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna measure how wide this line is, and I've already done this in advance, so this will be a little quicker. But I'm going to dimension the width of this line. Oh, wait. And it is 0 0.09. All right, so go back in here and put 0 0.09 times our per foot, and that says it's about six and a half feet wide, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't have a lot of um, resolution to deal with, so in this particular drawing with this particular uh, interface, also um, I think 
Adobe Illustrator, it, it doesn't use exactly the same unit, so it's a little different. So I think if you're using whatever you're using, you need to measure that just to make sure that it makes sense. But here we had had different points that we could, uh, the width, line widths we could do. And what I found out is six points is actually that six and a half feet. So that's going to be my race line width. So I'll actually have uh, the width of the car factored in when we do the flow analysis, which is pretty important. All right. Uh, other things that I noticed that I didn't talk about last time, I wanted to show you guys where, at least where the Houston SCCA stuff is, each, each um you know, region's going to have their information at a different spot, but for ours, I'll just show you. Here's our main, our Houston SCCA page, and we got autocross and this other stuff. So if I go to the maps, which basically just go into that one, it shows all these maps that we've had in the past. This one might look familiar. We were looking at it in the last video. That's my second, my second, um, map and this one down here was the first one that I'd done so those are the two maps uh, in the past that I've done and then if you go down to the bottom uh, we have the solo course designing manual which Roger wrote and it's excellent it's, it's pretty long so it's probably good to bookmark it to find the different graphs and stuff but our tables I've got a table I'm going to show you here in a minute out of that and that's how I came up with the uh, the speeds for the uh, flow analysis circles. Okay, down here we have different different uh, sites that we can have our, our uh, autocross at. This is Houston Police Academy. I always use PDF because it works well with the vector graphics softwares like Corel and Adobe Illustrator and stuff like that. So uh, PDF is kind of nice because it maintains, if you save it properly, it maintains all the, all the uh, layers that we were talking about yesterday so um, I'm not gonna click these up but this is where I got this from originally I will click this actually so if I look at the Houston one you'll see that this is not the one I'm actually using this one is a single layer that I originally made into this one that has all the stuff in it. So I'm probably going to have this uploaded so this will be available for anybody to use because I think it would probably make it a lot easier for whoever's drawn, drawn uh, to be able to do that. All right. Okay, and on the circles um, that we had the flow, flow analysis circles, I basically just took that spreadsheet and made these circles all be whatever that the the uh, spreadsheet said they should be and then this is the diameter so this is actually so this hundred here is actually 50 or no it's actually 200 from here to here so it's that's a radius not diameter so the 42 where that comes from is in Roger's book which uh, let me get this which I've already got it turned to that spot oh, here it is Okay, this right here does lateral lateral G's that your car is capable of versus the rad radius of the turn. And I basically came right through here that this 1.5 to 1.2, which is kind of where a fast street car with good tires will be, and use these numbers. So I basically just said, okay, if it's 100, I'm going to put in there 42. So I actually used, I kind of, I used between these two, so it, it'll pop around a little bit. It's not going to make that much difference anyway. That's how I came about making or having those flow circles. So now I, this makes sense. If I go in here and when I actually, we're going to, I'm not going to draw on this one yet. I'm still getting set up, making sure we understand how this works. Uh, but I start with flow circles in this area that has an open, <clears throat> you know, I mean a blank slate. You can do whatever you want because it's big enough. Elsewhere at HPA, there's really no necessity to do that in these areas where you're delimited by the grass because there's not much you can do with it. So I normally don't waste time doing that until I get all the way done and then I'll put flow circles on everything. But <clears throat> at the beginning I use the flow circles just to make sure this start flows well. So that's kind of what, that's the way it is. 
Okay, we went through race line width. Um, let's see. One other thing about I wanted to show about uh, if you screwed up in, uh, let's say we're, this is what layer we're on right now. And say I come in here, copy this, paste it. And I stick it in here, oh, like right there or something. That's not right, but you'll get the idea. What I've done is I've just screwed up there because I didn't put it on the right level. It's, that's on the race line level now. So if I turn the race line off, that's going to go away, and that's not the way I want it. So if I want that actually on the flow analysis, I'll click it again, cut it. Oh, crap. Hold on a second. I think I got to get all that. Okay. I cut it. Oops. Cut it. And then I'm going to go to flow analysis and paste it. And it puts it right back in the same spot. Oh. I locked that. I did not want that locked. I paste it and then it's back in there again and then this time it's on the right level that it goes away like it's supposed to so I just want to go through that real quick if you screw up and it's really easy to do when you're doing multi layers to have stuff on the wrong layer and then when you notice it all you have to do is cut it out of that layer go to the layer you want it to go and paste and it puts it right back in the same spot it makes it really easy to move them around on layers okay I'm gonna stop this one now and the next one's gonna be actually coming up with our race line but this is enough for me. I've got to kind of collect my thoughts and then we'll get started again. Thanks.